As I say, it's a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 8. And I'm going to be using some Simplify Nano Silk at 12 volt. Now, uh, I use super glue quite a lot. And uh, this isn't a Fly Dressers Guild Club, is it? Yeah, it is. All oh, right. You see, this is the beauty of being electronic. You can't throw stones at me over the internet. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, the fly dressers guild, they, they prefer people to use wax, and and that's great. If you're using ordinary thread, wax is ideal. But when you're using nano silks and uh, shiny black nickel hooks, it just doesn't cut it. Even with wax you're always going to get some body rotation after you've tied the fly. So I always uh, put a touch of super glue on, use the thread to spread it up and down the shank, and then I know that when the fly's finished, I won't get that body rotation when I try and twist it. And there's nothing more annoying, uh, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, I dare say you're in the... I'm talking to the wrong audience. You boys probably don't buy flies. I certainly don't. But I have bought flies in years gone by and they, they move around on the shank of the hook and it drives me insane. So the first thing I'm going to put down is the last thing to come over the body. And in this case it's going to be some mirror tinsel. It's slightly wider than the red tinsel I'm going to use. So I'm going to first of all just catch that in. I'll come all the way back again. And as we're on the early season flies theme, uh, I don't think there's very much more effective, well, probably a fly I'm going to be tying later, the candy floss booby, uh, is, is the most effective fly I find in the springtime. So I've got some red holographic here, and what I want to do with this is get it exactly on top of where I've tied in the pearl. And I'm going to bring that all the way back, like so. Now the next thing to go in is some trusty peacock hair. Now I've picked out already um, three strands. And what I want to do is get rid of the, the uppermost bits of the tip, because uh, that's the weakest part of peacock hair, right at the tip end. So we'll get rid of that and then I'm going to catch in the entire length of the body to the end here. Then I'm going to bring my silk all the way back up to the front and then I'll get several turns in at the front. Then I can hold the herald and just use the rotary function on the vise now it's very difficult uh, sat here in the chair at home with a glass of whiskey in my hand uh, to gauge how, uh, you know, are you getting it, are you enjoying it, so please do holler out, try and keep it civil, I don't want you calling me any names, but uh, please do let me know if there's any questions while I'm whittling up these flies. So I brought the peacock herald all the way up the body. I'm going to come in, leaving plenty of room at the front. Get two or three turns, a few turns in front. And putting, putting turns in front, it just stops the thread backing up. Uh, sometimes if you don't get them security turns, I call them, um, where you've caught the material can spring back and you end up with peacock herald at the bottom of the hook instead of at the top here where it should be. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring up my red. Now this is quite a big uh, traffic light cormorant. If you wanted to do smaller sizes, you would obviously have to come down in the diameter of your ribbing material. So that's come all the way to the front again. Get a couple of turns to hold that into place. A couple of turns in front of the material. And then I can simply take that away. Next, almost uh, ex 
exactly over the top again, covering the red. Turn for turn. And this is how you get that sort of traffic light appearance on the fly. Again, I'll bring it to the front here. You don't seem to have a lot of peacock fur on show. No, hardly any at all uh, with this. Uh, you, of course, if you wanted to have more, you simply use a smaller diameter. Uh, I like to, I mean, it's called the traffic light cormorant for this reason, you know, a lot of it's just, um, it's about the pearl and the red more than it is about the peacock pearl. So, next thing I want to do is tie in my marabou wing. And I'm just going to, I've got quite a good feather here and I want to just take the shorter ones away at the bottom and then about from the tip of my thumb to my knuckle I'm just going to take that away so where do you, where do you boys all do your fishing is it uh, on the big reservoirs or small still waters, rivers? Yeah, all of it. All of it. So what have you got in Worcester? Fishing wise. Um, River Severn. The Severn. We have a, oh yes, we have a club called the Game Fishers Club, so that consists of five brothers, small stream, very Slightly overgrown stream full of trout and gravy, right the way up the big rivers, well, like sections on the Ups and the um, Severn. Yeah. And then the big reservoirs fairly close in the Midlands, and then some bit fish up in into Wales. So it's a full range, really. Yeah, very lucky being so close to Wales. They've got some fantastic rivers. I was thinking about joining one of the Welsh clubs this year actually, it's, uh, I think it's £60 a year, where uh, down here it cost me £60 a day to go for a day's fish. So uh, I think I'll be definitely joining one of the Welsh clubs. So I've catch, caught in my wing here, and uh, there's a couple of different things you can do with uh, cormorants. I've, lately I've been starting to tie um, hen hackles in at the front just to generate movement, but on this occasion I'm going to tie in... Uh, some jungle cock eyes and I've got a feather here that I've actually split um, it's quite a good cape that I own but unfortunately I've used up all the small feathers so I've ended up having to split some of the good eyes and I'll pull that back and catch that in like so just check your side Oh, I can just look at the screen. Oh, that's new. That's novel. <laughs> yeah, that looks okay. I'm going to bend back my waist piece and then I watch all the, the David McPhail videos. I think he's a, a fantastic tire and he just grabs it and pulls it away. Every time I try that, I pull it out and it's just ends up like a disaster. I need to get him to show me that trick. So I've caught that in, and then all I'm going to do is use the nano silk to build a neat head at the front. And then I will find my whip finish tool. catch that in. Now, depending on what uh, is at hand on my tying bench, uh, really determines how I finish the fly. Uh, I've got some super glue here. That's what I'm going to use for this first one. Now, the brush, even though I have trimmed it up, you can see it's still, um, it's still rather bulky. So I'm just going to take some super glue 
onto your cocktail stick. Work that round the fly. Might just need a wee bit more. I try to be as sparing as I can with this. Um, not because it makes any difference to the fly, but because I'm really tight. Uh, and the longer it lasts, the better. So, there we go. There's the first one out of the way. Nice and easy. And fairly straightforward, even for the, uh, the most basic tyres. It's probably one of the, the flies that I would recommend. But, you know, a lot of the flies that I tie are competition competition flies and and they need to be quick because a lot of the uh sorry i've got to wear glasses for time flies but i can't see the screen when i'm wearing my glasses i don't know if that makes sense but uh it's just how it is so i tie a lot of competition flies because i used to do a lot of competition fishing and the flies have got to be quick uh when you're away fishing these matches if you come up with something that's working on the practice day you've got to be able to go back to the accommodation and then generally your time flies for the entire team so it's important that they're quick and easy to tie and the traffic lights just one of them flies so does anyone have any questions before we move along and while you're thinking about that I'll just clear the tiny little workspace I've got so that we can sorry does it look different when it's wet? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean the body, the body. Yeah, I suppose it does. It does have a hue to it. I mean, I'm a big fan of layering materials to get a certain effect. Um, I suppose the the traffic light. I'm not quite sure who, who came up with it, but it's certainly uh, it's an effective fly. But half the time, I do think. Uh, it's more in the head, it's a confidence thing, you know, somebody said, oh, I'm fishing a traffic light, whereas I could be fishing a pearly cormorant and I'd be just as happy, you know, does it make that much difference? Not to the fish, I don't think, I think it's, uh, it's it probably makes more of a difference to the angler than it does to the fish, but um, there we go, it's, it's a very successful pattern, there can be no doubt that it, it, it's worth tying a few up and having in your box. So... Just get that out. And I, I usually just leave, when I do these demonstrations live, I usually leave the flies with the with the organizers, but that's going to be difficult. I can't quite push that out. So the next one, um, I'm going to try, and it, it, it's going to be a try because I think I've tied this once before. Uh, it's an articulated egg sucking leech. Now, do you want to see that and it could go really wrong or uh, I can do something a bit simpler? What do you think? Should we do the egg sucking leech? Yeah. Okay. You've yeah, asked yeah. for it. You've asked for it. Okay. Right. Let me grab the bits. Was the cormorant for a while? Chainsaw is rainbow. Rainbow uh, uh, it's a, well, I use it for rainbows. Would it take wild trout? I dare. I mean, I dare I mean the one just on the Sorry, I didn't catch that last bit. The one you've just tied with that yeah. people, wild trout or... No, if I, stocked, stocked rainbows is what I would use it for. I mean, I would use it, and certainly that size, I'd be using it at places like Rutland and Grafham. Uh, for smaller still waters, I, my cormorants tend to be size 14s and 16s, much smaller flies. I think uh, when you go to a venue like Rutland or Grafham, it's a big bit of water. The fish, they, they might see a few flies, but they certainly don't see as much as these smaller still waters. Um, you've got to scale right down, I find anyway, you've got to scale right down to get any success at some of the smaller still waters. Uh, let me just grab the bits for this. Now, you've all, you've all heard the snake flies, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, I don't know how many years alone up to fishing them. 
I bet you all do and you just won't see, but uh, they definitely work, there's no doubt about it. So let's go back to this. And what I've got here is some brand new, straight for the BFFI at the weekend, is some black rabbit. Now, that's looking pretty nice actually. I should have really had it out of the packet to look at it, but it's looking okay. Now the two hooks I'm going to use, I'm going to use for the front end, the, the Hanak H970. Now the reason I'm using this, it's got a really big eye in the hook and, and I need that for uh, what I'm going to do first of all. So I'll get it in the vise. Now there's various, uh, I mean people will argue black is white when it comes to fly tying, I'm sure you all know. So uh, you've, you've just got to find your own way half the time. So what I've found, and, and this is over a number of years, I've not just come up with this, is when I started tying snakes, uh, I was advised to use carp mainline at about £15, which gave you um, fantastic movement in the fly, you know, it bucked round in that. But what I was finding after fishing them for some time is that they would get tangled and the carp mainline would end up giving up on you. And often when you're hooked to fish, which is not ideal, you never want to leave uh, hooks in fish. So it's not a great thing. So what I use now, I've got it around somewhere, is this stuff. So it's it's fly line back in, it's £30. Now it's a little stiffer, and I've already pre-waxed this, it's a little stiffer than the carp mainline, and you definitely don't get as much movement, but you get longevity, and the fly very, very rarely tangles. So again, before I start, I'm going to just get a touch of super glue onto the hook. For this, I'm going to use uh, Nano Silk again. It's at three aught this time, and I'm just going to get that super glue spread up the shank. And then I can remove that away. So what I want to do with this is put it in like so. Try and keep everything on top and I'll come back. So once I've got that in place, I'm now going to go to work on it really hard turns down I'm going all the way to the back and then I'm going to come all the way back up If I just turn the vise to the side, you'll see I've still got, even though I've put that um, £30 mainline through the eye of the hook, there's still plenty of room for my tippet material. Now, once I've got to the, the front of the hook here, I'm just going to cast off. Now, this is where it could, this is the bit, remember I said it could all go wrong. So uh, what I'm going to do next is take out my little trusty Leatherman. I used to have a pair of wire cutters, but I can't find them. And I'm going to take the bend of this hook away here, just over my wastebasket. Luckily I'm wearing glasses, so there's a good chance I won't take my eye out this evening. Oh, and it's all gone wrong. I knew it would. Right, bear with me, folks. Right, 
Now these will work great for uh, rainbow trout, brown trout. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're pining for brown trout, I find putting a little bit of gold in works really well. But I've got some of these here. They're, uh, I just got them from Temu or something like that. They're very cheap. And what I want to do is thread my bead through that. And all the way to the front of the fly. And I can bring that back into the vise. And what I want to do. What size bead is that? Uh, it doesn't really say. I would say it's probably around 10 mil. do is just push that up into place like so. Now the, the, the reason and it might seem strange the way I'm doing this but if you don't do it this way you don't get the the egg part of the leech onto the hook so it's not the usual way I would tie a snake fly but I'm having to do it this time. Now the, the fly I'm going to be using, uh, sorry, the hook I'm going to be using for the stinger is, is a long shank size 8. Now, what I usually do is I prepare it up to the stage of getting the connector and the hook ready before I start tying materials on. So once again, I'm going to just get a touch of super glue onto the shank. I think um, there's a lot of uh, there is a big difference between fly tying and fly fishing. Uh, you know, a lot of people tie flies for the pleasure of it. Uh, obviously, fishing's something that we all do. Hopefully, we all do uh, until we're not able. And then we tend to retire to our little rooms where there's a vice and fly time becomes our new hobby. So I've got my piece here, super glue's kind of dried and what I want to do is determine what length I'm going to have my snake at. Now when I first started tying snakes I would tie them to 10 centimeters and uh, they worked fine but I think as they grew in popularity on the small waters and the larger waters, the, the 10 centimetre snakes were starting to be avoided quite a bit. So what I do now is I do them at about two and a half inches. So what I've got here is a little metal ruler. You might be able to see it better on this camera. And uh, I measure this up. So I make it from the eye of the hook at three inches and then I'm going to cut and tip it to length tip it back in grey I'll put that to the side because it will do for another fly then I can come in now this time you see the way the eye of the hook is inclined down I want this to come in and sit on the bottom It's all going wrong tonight. So who won the quiz? I hear you were having a wee quiz while you were waiting. Did anyone get a bottle? <laughs> the quiz never happened. Oh, the, oh, the quiz didn't happen either. Oh no, it's been a terrible night for you boys. Right, I've caught that in now. We had a lesson on, um, we had a lesson on Molly Wing. Oh right, yeah. See, there we go, there's, uh, there's uh, an ideal example of 
fly tying versus fly fishing. So Wally wings, they look nice and all, but if you go fishing with them, they twist your leader up like there's no tomorrow. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, they're nice looking, though, they? They, they do. They, they photograph well, is what I would say. They're nice flies yeah, for. They they're, they're nice flies for photographing. I wouldn't go fishing with them, mind. So again, I've I've caught that in now, and I'm going to come right to the end. Now, some, I'm often asked when I do these, or oh, does it ever come out? It's never come out yet, so um, I'm hoping it won't in the future. Now, these, the reason I got tying these is I'm going to Michigan next month for steelhead, and uh, I'm told that egg-sucking leeches do quite well. Now, they tie them, they're non-articulate, the way they tie them out there. And I've lost my strip off... Should have took a strip of uh, this out of the packet, but I could be just losing my mind. Sorry, teasing it and tempting it with a carrot. <laughs> okay, so uh, I've got this uh, this strip here, and it seems to get better up through the middle. It's a bit a little too thin for my liking at the back end here. Now, a tip you may or may not be aware of with um, with these strips, what I like to do is cut a V in at the end. And what this does, uh, and, I, and I've done some experimentation with it, is when you cut a V into the material like that, it does add to a little bit to the movement of the fly. So first thing I'm going to do is just part the deer hair, deer hair, Jesus Christ. I've only had like half a glass of whiskey and I'm on about deer hair. I've, uh, zonker strip, that's the word I was looking for. So catch that in. Couple of turns. And then what I'm gonna do is come round the back here Lift, lift the whole thing back out the way and then wrap that up. Now if you are of a mind to, you might well want to add some dub in, something like that, to the back end of the body. I don't, I don't uh, do that. Uh, I like to have it nice and sparse. Then I'll bring it, measure it up. See where I want my thread to catch that in. I always thought this was a wee bit ambitious, this fly, for this kind of thing, but... Ach, you've got to stretch yourself sometimes, haven't you? So just stroke that back, nice and carefully. A lot of... Uh, a lot of boys just are, are far too quick with the fly time, probably because they're, they're making a living out of it, to be fair. Uh, I never sell flies. I don't, I, I can't quite understand these boys that are selling their flies. I mean, it takes me like weeks to tie a box of flies. Why would I want to sell it for 30 quid or something? Mad. So before I bring that zonker strip over the top, I'm just going to get a touch of super glue on at the top of the shank. Now this uh, serves two purposes, it will bring the zonker strip and hold it into place and it will also soak through and just add a little bit of strength to my connection. So just two turns, I'm going to bring that back out the way, a couple of turns in front here. I'm not going to use a whip finish tool, I'm just going to use my fingers. I find it a bit easier for doing these. Bring it up to the hook. And 
that's a good one. I'd like to tell you that was a hard bit, but it isn't. It only it goes for hard to harder with this fly, but uh, I think it'll be worth it. With any luck, you'll be looking at pictures of my massive steelhead on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Okay, so I'm going to take that out of there now. And the other thing I don't like about tying these is, sure as eggs is eggs, a hook is going to end up in my hand at some point. And I'm sure it'll be very entertaining for you chaps, but it always hurts like a bastard. So, once more. I'm going to, just off, off, the, off the main camera here, I've just hung this over the edge of my vise. So I'm just going to get some beeswax onto my nano silk. Then I'm going to come in again and cast my thread back on. Now this time, at the front, I do like to add a body. And... How I'm going to do that is with some of this stuff. Now, what is it called? It's a trout line dub and it's just called number eight. And it's it's black with a little bit of uh, UV. I've got it in one of these dubbing dispensers. Hence, I haven't got a packet to show you, unfortunately. But it's, uh, they call it Mad Rabbit. Plus, it's a great thing. Um, they kind of get rub it and blend it in with some other materials and what I'm, going, what I'm doing is just fanning it out a little and I'm going to catch it into a tying clip uh, like so then I can use my dubbing needle here to split my thread and at 3 aught, even a blind old bat like me can manage this Not very well, mate. Uh, how's the audio? Can you can you all hear me okay, eh? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Something's going right. So I've got my clip. No one used to be all <laughs> It's actually, in fact, I've forgotten what I was drinking. It is... Oh, it's a 16-year-old Lagavulin, and it's very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. I uh, did. It, did many of you go to the BFFI last weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't suppose there's a guy called Piero. He said he's. I suppose he sells scissors as his main sort of thing, copter scissors. And uh, yeah, they had a boy on the stand, Evo, <laughs> lovely guy, great fly tire, and. Uh, he was tying with his bobbin. I said, oh, what, that's a fancy looking bobbin. What's that? He said, oh, it's the new bobbin. I said, oh, what does it do? He says, uh, oh, well, it's for when you're spinning dubbin. You just hold it and spin the bottom and it all spins up the dubbin. I said, oh, that's very clever. I said, how much is that? <laughs> he said, uh, oh, I think they're 60 quid. <laughs> yeah, the world's gone bloody mad. <laughs> so I've got that on and... Uh, Yeah, there's a lot of other um, bobbin holders. I mean, it's up to people. You can buy what you like, I suppose. But for something that holds thread, I, I just can't get my heat around it, really. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did, did some of you boys buy that bobbin? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. It's a great bobbin. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> we'll have to ask Ken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm now stretching okay. it out. I've got a different one with <laughs> the extending muscle on it. Sorry, it's got an extending. It's got an extension on Ken. You can make oh. it longer or short. <laughs> Inadequate cut. <laughs> <laughs> make it longer. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so the, this is the bit I always find tricky with these, uh, and, and not just this pattern, but any of the sort of snakes, because if you get it wrong, you end up with too much um, connection to not enough wing, or the, the other way round. So it is a balancing act, and you've got to, you've got to get it right, or it, the fly doesn't swim right. So I'll just take that. I'm going to put one turn in, just to hold it into place, and then have a look. See, uh, I don't know. You, you can't see really well, but already I can see that I've got too much zonker strip to connect her. So I've just adjusted it there with that one turn. And that's looking much better. Now, the next thing I want to do, now I'm happy it's in place, is get another turn in front, like so. And once I've done that, I can bend it backwards now, get a few locking turns in, and then come in and remove my excess. So that's looking not too bad. And I'll show you on the on the main screen in a minute because it is a big old beast. Now, uh, the other thing you can do is put a couple of runners up the side. Now, this isn't mosaic. Uh, don't get excited. I used my last batch of mosaic on a pike fly. Uh, people would have gone mental. Said I could have sold it for a small fortune. This is the Kitty on Simplify Mosaic, so it's it's very similar stuff. It's again. I've, has anyone got a law of ice there before I start making jokes about the price of ices? No, good. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you know mosaic and the the price of materials and stuff. People, I heard somebody bought a shank for three hundred pounds. I, I was like absolutely flabbergasted. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have tied that pike fly, that's for sure. So I've got my runner. I'm going to catch in on my side first. I don't want it to, to go much past the body. So I'll get a couple of turns. I'm going to bring it round to your side now. And I'm going to catch that in. Now, just to finish up, I'm going to grab my dubbing box again. And what I've got here is, uh, this is Belgian rabbit black. What's the difference between a Belgian rabbit and an English rabbit? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if they're maybe domestic rabbits and they've got longer hair or something, but... Uh, this is just... You and the other one <laughs> I had to be tax on that then. So, right, I've got that in. I'll stick it in my clip and open it up. Now, I'm a big fan of um, creating dubbing loops by just opening the thread. I think uh, it keeps the bulk down and it just looks nice. Now, I could have just stuck the dubbing on in a big clump and then teased it out with my brush. I'm convinced that you just don't get the same kind of finish. I'll just uh, use the extension on my bobbin here to... Uh... <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, I'm only kidding. I'm only pulling your leg. Just pull some of that out. It's looking a wee bit too thick for my liking. Just being overzealous with that Belgian rabbit. Want to get what I can out of the EU. And then I can bring that up from the back. And then I'm going to keep coming over till I get back to my thread. And that's looking just how I want it. Now these are, uh, I'm going to tie a few of these up actually, I'm, I'm going to order one of these fancy boxes that I've seen at the BFFI but I forgot to buy it because it took me about three, six hours actually it took me to get from the front door to the, the tyres which uh, 
I was really keen to see a couple of the, there was a boy there tying size 32 dry flies which I was I was quite keen to see but um, by the time I got there I think he'd packed up for, for the day. So I put some super glue on my thread and I'll come in, he says. And whip finish. Now if you bear with me, I'll see if I can flip this screen and show you this fly in all its glory. I dare say they don't use this one for uh, the Fly Dressers Guild's tests, but there's my <laughs> egg sucking leech. Maybe they should introduce it actually. Confuse the, confuse the newbies. But um it pull it's... the back um book a little bit tighter. Sorry? Pull the back book a little bit tighter. That'll go your finger. <laughs> <laughs> That's just really cruel. You'll not be getting a dram when you come to my house. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, what nice? next? Is that nice? Oh, it's, oh, God, it's gorgeous. It's the distiller's it's edition as well. My wife didn't scrimp. <laughs> it was a Christmas present, actually. I mean, uh, it might seem like I drink a lot, but I really don't, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I can't afford to drink a lot, actually, because I, I, I only like really nice whiskies and... Um, Sadly, when when whiskey became collectible, drinking whiskey wasn't so much fun because all the prices went through the roof. I mean, for example, I, I drink Aberlura Buna, I love it, it's a great drink. You used to be able to pick it up for £38 on special at Amazon. You can't get a bottle of that for much less than 90 quid nowadays. It's a special occasion whiskey now. Um, but this is a special occasion and that's why I've got the Lagavulin out. Right. Let me get the next stuff. Is there any questions on the snakes or does anyone want to slag me off or, you know, bring it now or forever hold your peace? So they only have one hook again? Yes. Can you have two or three hooks? No, you only, you only have one hook and it's to do with the movement now. For a while, and a very well known angler said to me, who fishes a lot of snakes and big flies, he said, oh, you've got to have two hooks because sometimes the fish will hit it at the head and uh, you, you'll miss it. But at the speed I'm bringing it back, I will get it because if it's hit it at the head, a nanosecond later, that hook's in its head somewhere. Um, so I don't quite understand. And certainly I've, I've played about in the swim tank and left the front hook intact and, and it just, it doesn't swim right. I, I, if there's a way of doing it, I'd be be interested to hear it, but certainly um, for the experiment I've done, it, it doesn't swim properly. When it's when it's tied like I've uh, I've just shown you here, um, you get fantastic movement with this. It's, it's amazing actually. It's, I can see why the fish hit it so readily. Right, so we've, we've tied... You know, um, you know, I've already done it... Uh, uh, Fairly heavy sinking line, wouldn't you take it down? Um, it depends on where the fish are in the water column. You know, if if yeah. the if the fish are deep, then yeah, you you put it on a heavy sinker and um, pull it back. But I've found the most success has been like a an intermediate line, something like a fast glass or a DI3. It, it seems to work really well, um, and that and that's. From the smaller still waters, probably bigger venues like Grafham, Rutland, that sort of thing, you're probably looking to be fishing a little bit deeper. Just before you move on, Lindsay, just the bead on the head. You don't put another, any wraps in front of it behind the eye? No. So, no. No. No, I suppose it would be, it would certainly be a belts and braces idea, um, because what you don't want is your, is your bead to pop off the, the front, but the last time uh, I went to Michigan, we fished with articulated lures, but the Americans, they, they have a, well, they're very strange. They, they, so they, they don't have their weight on their flies. What they, they do is they use a swivel sling 
and then they add the weight to the swivel and then your fly comes off another length of tippet on the swivel ring and that's how they get the, the fly to sink. Now a lot of the flies, that obviously when we go river fishing we, we use tungsten beads to wear patterns down to get them down in the flow. Um, but one of the most successful flies, but I was fishing for king salmon at the time, they just have like a, a normal snake and then they would slip one of these beads just over the tippet so that it would just go on to the 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 front of the hook if you like on the tippet does that, does that make sense to you yeah 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 so uh, th that's where i got the idea oh perhaps that i've just stuck that in my finger that would be much more effective um having it ready to go and then well i'll soon let you know in a couple of months time uh, uh, we're all happy to, to move on? Yeah, yeah.